Hi folks, it's good to be with you today. It's nice to be back in Manchester. I've been away to Ghana. And uh, it's good to be back home. It's a beautiful Manchester today. So today, I want to just share with you uh, from the book the book of Ephesians today and uh, share in the word of God uh, from the book of Ephesians. So from the word of God the Bible, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the prayers, excuse me, to the prayers of the glory of grace, where it has made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The, the Bible is the word of God, and the Bible teaches about how to get to heaven. The Bible shows us how to get to heaven, the way to heaven. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you want to live forever? Do you want to have eternal life? Do you want to be in the presence of God? Do you want to have a relationship with God? And if you wonder what the meaning of life is and the purpose of life is, and you want to know God, then I have the answer and it's in the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God and the Bible shows us how to get to heaven, my friend. Now you might say, Jason, I, I, I'm not interested, I don't care, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not that spiritually minded, I'm not that bothered, I, I don't really care, Jay. Well, let's look at the verse again. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace and redemption, salvation. That is what the Bible is saying, that is what the Bible is offering. The Bible is offering salvation, the Bible is offering redemption. And we all need to have salvation, we all need redemption. Every one of us needs that forgiveness of God. There's not one here that has failed, there's not one here that has made mistakes. Every single one of us has made mistakes. The Bible says, all fall short of the glory of God and I fall short and you fall short, we all fall short of the glory of God, every single one of us. And because of that we all need mercy, we all need the grace of God. Now you say, Jay, I don't want the grace of God. I'm happy. I'm happy with my money, I'm happy with my retirement, I'm happy with my house, I'm happy with this, I'm happy with that. But if you miss the one thing in life that is central, if you miss the one thing that is important, if you miss the Lord Jesus Christ who made heaven and earth, then you have missed everything. You have missed everything. You see, you could have the biggest house, the biggest car, the biggest money, the biggest fame. You could have it all, but in a minute it can be taken away. Look at California today. 
there, they were famous, they had money, they had the riches, but overnight a fire came and that fire took their houses. Overnight the rich and the famous in California were reduced to nothing by a fire. And you see, you cannot rely on anything in this world. You cannot rely on anything in this world because everything in this world falls apart. Everything in this world decays. So you can build your hope on a house, you can build your hope on fame, you can build your hope on power, you can build your hope on money, but everything will fall eventually. The California film stars, the California people with fame, with their big houses and their big fame and their big money was reduced to ashes by a fire a fire that came within a day took their houses away there is no security in this life the only security is the rock of ages rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee the rock of ages son of God is the only way and the only hope that we can have hope today. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace. Of his grace. God offers you his grace today. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve his grace. We don't deserve His mercy, but yet God offers it to us. You see, my friend, you see, my friend, God provided a sacrifice for you. God provided a sacrifice. He says in Isaiah 53, He says He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon Him. By his stripes we are healed, and the Lord gave you a sacrifice. And that sacrifice on the cross, the Calvary, <coughs> where Christ died, is where Christ died for you <coughs> and offered his life for you and laid down his life and took the blows and the wrath and the judgment that you and I deserved every wicked thing that you have done and I have done he took the wrath the punishment for you when they whipped him he was being whipped for sinners when he carried the cross he was carrying the cross for sinners when they lifted him up on that cross and they nailed him to that cross and the blood was coming down Christ was dying for you on that cross shedding his blood so that you may be forgiven so that you may be redeemed so that you may be washed and clean so that you may come to the Father and be clean through the blood of the Lamb through the blood of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb will cleanse you of all your mistakes that blood was shed on that cross because Christ loved you and died on that cross to redeem you from the hell and the wrath to come. For make no mistake about it, God is a holy God and there is wrath. But yet Christ died on that cross and took your wrath and your punishment because he loved you. Because he loved you, my friend. That love was deep. That love was vast. That love was mighty. That love was glorious. His name was the Messiah. His name was Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved you and died for you on that cross. He died for every single one of us today. He loves every single one of us. He loves every single one of us and offers his love to you today. He offers his goodness to you today. He offers you his blessings to you today. He offers you his tenderness today, his kindness today. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the Son of God wants to come into your life today. The Son of God wants to be your Savior today. The Son of God wants to give you comfort and peace today. 
The Son of God wants to come to be with you today. He wants to dwell with you today, comfort you today, be your Savior today. And He's here for you today, tenderly, softly. Jesus is calling, calling to sinners come home. And He calls to you today to find the sweetness of God, the love of God, the kindness of God, the blessings of God, and all the goodness of God, and the kindness of God, and the blessings of His presence, and the blessings of His love, and the blessings of who God is. Tenderly, softly, Jesus is calling, calling to sinners come home, and He calls to you today. Oh, come, come away from your sin, Come away from your pride. Come away from your drugs. Come away from your rationalism. Come away from your idolatry. Whatever you worship today, if it is not God, it is idolatry. Whether it is sex and power and drugs or materialism, we have made that a God and we do not love God and we do not love Christ and we do not know Him. But yet He comes to us tenderly. He comes to us lovingly. He comes to us gently. He comes to us sweetly, tenderly, softly. Jesus is calling, calling to sinners come home. And oh, He'll dwell with you. He'll dwell in your heart with love. He'll dwell in your heart with peace. He'll dwell in your heart with comfort. For He is a comforting Savior. He is a loving Savior. He is a blessed Savior. He is the only Savior. The only Savior with heavenly blessings. The only Savior with glory from heaven. The only Savior that came down from heaven and came down to die for you. He is the only one that loved. He is the only one that died for you. The blessed Savior. The blessed Lord. The blessed King of kings and Lord of lords. All the glory of heaven. The riches of heaven are yours today. If only you would come to Him and know his love and know his blessings and can it be that i should gain an interest in the savior's blood and can it be that he would save me a wretch like me how can it be that he would save paul who murdered christians yet on damascus road in the book of acts chapter 9 he saved a murderer called paul he, he saved him from murder and made him into a Christian preacher and Paul became the greatest preacher that ever lived yet before he was a preacher he was a murderer and yet God saved him and God can save you today however far you were strayed however far you have gone to drugs or money or sex or power and you have drifted away from the Lord and you don't care about your soul you don't care about heaven. You don't care about hell. And you've drifted away and you don't care. But God cares about you. Jesus cares about you. And Jesus is knocking at your heart. He's knocking at your heart today. And he says, I am your Savior. I am your Lord. And I come to you today. And I sweetly want to be with you today. Oh, come to me. Come, I am your Savior, I am your Lord, I loved you. I had the glory with the Father before time began. Before time began, I was with the Father. Before time began, I knew you. Before time began, I came into this world. And they laughed at me and they mocked me and they put me on a cross and they crucified me. But I did it for you, for I said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life and God gave all that he had for you would you give your baby son would you give your son your, your son would you give your son for 10 drug addicts would you give your baby for 20 drug addicts Jesus Christ gave his son for the whole world he gave all that he had God gave all that he had. He gave his son, the one and only son, from all glory, from all eternity. God gave all that he had on the altar for you. That when Christ died, he died 
taking your punishment, your wrath, and he died to save you, my friend. He gave all for you. And now God says to you, and commands everybody here to repent. Repent of pornography. Repent of pride. Repent of every sexual immorality that this nation says is good and is wrong. You have to repent of it, for the Bible says that it is wrong. The Bible says repent of lies. The Bible says repent of drunkenness. The Bible says repent. You turn away from it. You turn away from all that which is evil. And though the government make laws and say evil things are good, the government might make a law and say that something is evil is good. But Jesus says, repent of it, for it is evil in my sight. It is evil in my sight, and I have none of that evil in my sight. For I am a holy God, and I am a holy Savior, and I love you, and I die for you. Now repent. Repent of all the wicked things in your life. Turn away from it. It doesn't matter what the politicians say. It doesn't matter what the political correct brigade say. Jesus says repent. Jesus says repent. And turn to him. Jesus said repent, repentance, national repentance, national repentance, every politician needs to repent, to repent of the wickedness, the wickedness of turning away from the living God, the church needs to repent of the wickedness that she has done, where she will not preach the word of God, and our nation has to repent. Repent of drunkenness. Repent of sexual immorality. Repent of turning evil into good and good into evil. There has to be repentance in this nation. There has to be a turning away from evil. Turning away from idolatry. Turning away from money. Making God as a money. Making sex as a money. Making fame as a money. Making power as a money. Uh, making all these things in uh, idolatry. There has to be national repentance. There has to be an awakening, my friend. An awakening that we have fallen into sin as a nation. An awakening that we are a broken nation. Smashed on the rocks of rationalism. Smashed on the rocks of immorality. We are a nation smashed on the rocks of impurity and ungodliness and unholiness. All of us, I included. We are smashed on the rocks of immorality. And our politicians are washed in corruption. Our institutions are washed in, in, in corruption. Our police force and every institution has been broken in immorality. And there has to be repentance from the police, from the judiciary, from the army, from every single person in our land. There has to be national repentance. The Church of England and the Church has to repent of an immorality. There has to be national repentance, a turning away from evil, a turning away from abortion, a turning away from immorality, my friend. National repentance has to come. There has to be an awakening and realize that what made our country great was the name Yeshua was the name Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. He, He is what made our country great. He is the one that made rule Britannia great. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the one that made us a great nation. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And it is He that calls you back to Him. It is He that calls you back to Him. You may have a national health service. You may have money. You may have the dough. You may have houses. You may have eating. 
You may have all these things, but if you miss Jesus Christ as a nation, if you miss Christ as a nation, then your soul is lost. And there is only poverty for your soul and poverty for the nation. National poverty, spiritual poverty. Us politicians are spiritually immature. Our politicians are spiritually immature. Our leaders in our nation are spiritually immature. They are backsliders from the Christ of Scripture. Oh, Jesus. Blessed Jesus. The Savior of our land. The Savior of our souls. Tenderly, softly. Jesus is calling. Calling to sinners come home. It's all about Christ, my friend. Christ, the Son of God. You said, Jay, yeah, he was only a prophet. Jay, I don't believe in the Trinity. I don't believe in the Trinity. Three and one and one and three, it don't make sense. Let me give you a lesson in philosophy. Reality is one, is it not? Reality is one. But there are many parts to reality. The one and the many. Reality is one, yet there are many parts to reality. God is one, but three. Reality is one, but many. There ends my philosophical lecture for you today. The Trinity is biblical. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, with God, and the Word was God. The Trinity there, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God bless you, sir. I'll take you for Costco coffee, bro, if you want. God bless you. The Trinity is biblical. Show me in the Bible that Trinity is not there. When God made the Adam and Eve, he said this. Let us, let us make man in what? Our image. If God is one, why did he say let us make man in our image? You see, God is a trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, these three are one. Trinity. Our country is a trinitarian country. Our country is a trinitarian God. Jesus is God in the flesh. So my friends, tenderly, softly, Jesus is calling, calling to sinners come home. He is the one to look to, not to me, not to the church, not to anybody else. He, Jesus Christ, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Do you want a debate, sir? Come on, have a debate. Come on, have a debate. Come on. Do you want to ask a question? Uh, have a dialogue with me. Come on, bro. Anything. Yeah, ask a question. What actually is the Trinity supposed to be? That's a good question. The Trinity is God. Okay? So God has revealed Himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's what the Bible teaches. If you read John chapter 17, Jesus says, glorify me with the glory that I had before. And so before he was born, he had glory. So he's showing you that before the beginning of time, there is the Father and the Son. Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said in 15 and 16, I send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit knows everything, is everywhere, so He's God. So the Bible's revealed God, and it's a good question, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, in the end of Matthew, the book of Matthew, at the end of the book of Matthew, when the Lord said, go into all the world and make disciples, do you know what He said? He said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now notice, He did not say this. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. He said, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jews only have one name for God. Yahweh. Amen. So when he says, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
It's saying that Jesus is God. See? And so we believe in a Trinitarian God. Amen. God bless you, bro. That is the Trinity. And the Trinity is important if you want to understand God. Because God is a relational God. He wants a relationship with you. And he, God bless you. And he wants to bring you into that relationship. And the Father planned salvation. The Son accomplished salvation, died for you. And the Holy Spirit reveals salvation. So it's important. You want to ask a question, sir? You sure? Are you an atheist? Are you an agnostic? It's all right, you're not on camera, so don't worry. I'd like to ask a question. Can I ask your question? Yeah. Is there any, any reason why you're an agnostic? You're a really nice guy. You're one of the nicest agnostics I've ever met, bro. One of the nicest agnostics I've ever met. Can, can I give you a, a hypothesis? Yes. And I believe this is true, but for you just put yourselves in my shoes. So you don't have to believe it's true. But just imagine what if the case, what if the scenario? What if there is a God? What if he demade humanity and humanity fell into sin? What if he came down as Jesus Christ? They whipped him and mocked him and humiliated him. And Jesus Christ died on a cross to take your punishment and then died and rose again and now calls you to repent, turn away from that which is wrong and believe on him. And as you believe on him, everything that you're forgiven, everything you've done is forgiven, but then you can now come into the presence of God and have a relationship with God because the Spirit of God dwells in you. From your perspective, can you just put yourselves in my shoes and tell me what your reaction to that is? What, what, how does that make you think or what questions come to your mind when you hear that message from you? And it'd be really nice to hear. That's a good point. What if we could anything happen? But what I, what I was trying to help you to do, imagine I said, imagine eating a sweet that is the most sweetest sweet you've ever had. Right? Or imagine eating a cyanide pill that is the most poisonous. You could imagine the pain of the cyanide pill. And you could imagine the sweetness. So when I'm saying about God, imagine. What I'm trying to help you to understand is whatever happiness you have now, if you try to put yourself in my shoes, there could be more to the happiness that you have. There could be more to understanding your significance, your purpose, and who you are in this world. If you try to understand in my shoes the implications of it. So I understand what you were saying. I'm just trying to get you to think in a different way. Do you understand that? Yeah, yes, yes. Why can't we worship the Lord? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a good point. Okay, okay. 
Okay. Do you want to say something? The way that I kind of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, when they read that book, they say, you'll kick out the things that strike the chord in death. Yeah, yeah. And then come forward into the little things in the room. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, I think, I think that's why.